Okay, we're back guys. What would I want to talk to you on this episode is uh, we've gone through the stages of wet sanding with 1500 grit, 2000 grit, we stopped there. Now we're gonna go into the polishing mm -hmm. and really bringing that life to the paint finish, the gloss, the depth, the removal of the sanding marks, that kind of stuff. I want Tom now to discuss the process of converting the sanding marks into shine. The art of creating shine, the conversion process. So I'm gonna grab that camera. We're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about what tool of choice you're using, why a rotary, why a wool pad, why is this wool pad blue? Like what's up with that? The ceramics polish, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna pull in for you guys. This is the panel that Tom's gonna to be working on. It's been uh, sanded, like I said, 1500 grit, 2000 grit. So in your opinion, Tom, you're good to go. You're ready to, to move on to the next stage. So one of the, you know, if, if I was teaching a class and we had this car in that class, so the first thing that I would want them to understand is we did do 1500 to 2000 grit, 2000, you know, could you go more? Yeah, you could, but we're gonna buff this really, really fast from a 2000 grit. Um, and now you have two very distinct peak lines here. Yes, if you, you take do. the buffer and run it on the peak line, you're going to buy this paint job. There's, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a big problem. So what I want everybody to understand in the class is the angle that this buffer, all rotaries move in a clockwise, you know, they're going clockwise. Yes. Um, I'm not going to ever buff a peak line like there's no reason for me to ever buff on top of a peak line i'm going to hit that peak line here always knowing where the tip of my pad is that's the only reason a rotary gets dangerous is because you're not paying attention yeah it's not because it's a rotary right. <laughs> the rotary tool right. by itself ain't going to do nothing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know but if if you um you know understand where everything is and why it's aggressive and all that stuff you're not gonna ever have a burn, and we're not taping these lines. I don't want no tape lines out here. The only reason why we put tape lines on the door is because they're very, very sharp. They're very sharp, and there's no What is your opinion on tape lines? Because, you know, this is, I don't care what subject we're talking about, everyone's gonna have a different opinion. So on, what is your on take urethane, on? urethane, there's no reason, I don't believe there's any reason to tape even you know, peak lines on a body, on your thing. Now, you'll see an old video that I did on a very, very, very rare C2 Ferrari with original paint on the car. Yeah. I taped every single line on that car because there's no paint. There is no paint from the factory on that car in 1970. And by so, no paint, you just mean incredibly thin. It's Obviously, super, super it's got thin. paint on it. It's, it's probably you know. been, buff I, before or waxed many times since 1970 yeah. so the paint is super super thin and the you know it's nitrocellulose so the you know touching that up is going to be now when you say nitrocellulose impossible. are you talking about referring to the paint yeah, formulation the, the type of material it is okay very very old this is very hard as long as you never buff incorrectly you're never going to burn that edge you know i there's no product on here but I'm buffing, I'm not on the line, but you can see how fast that came up. I didn't even use any product. I was just gonna say, because I didn't, I didn't know if you were gonna address it or not, but you've already just created shine and yep. that was, uh, you know, what? Literally a second. <laughs> and look at how nice the line looks. You know, you can see the distinction in the line. I'm buffing off the line. There's plenty of material here when I compress it into there that it's going to get right up to the edge. I'm not going over. Now on this side, I'm going to get, let's do this side. I'm buffing off that edge. Now clarify for it's coming my audience, off that when you edge. say off versus on. Yeah, so, so here. So you're talking about the rotation of the pad itself. The rotation. So here, I'm, it's buffing into that surface yes. here. Here, I'm buffing off of, off of that yes. surface here. So here, it's, it's just like a file, like you're just sharpening a knife. You're never gonna put the file on the edge. <laughs> you're gonna hey, right. dull the blade, right. you know? So we're, 
we're buffing this way and we're buffing yeah, this way. Yeah, that's a good analogy. You yeah, know, sharpening, you want to sharp. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you want to sharp. And look at that doesn't need any more polishing. That edge <laughs> yeah. is done. So that let me talk about another point, because, um, you know, now we're I don't know. I just often I start talking and my head instantly goes into all this information and all this hyped up stuff that you just <laughs> see on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And it's just like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I, I feel for these beginners where they're just we're so overwhelmed with information and just how do you know what is what is good information, what's bad, what's misleading, whatever. So what I'm getting at is the sanding um, grits that they now have where they're going up to 8000 grit. And I thought 5000 grit was pretty absurd. Mm -hmm. And I thought, OK, at 3000 grit, as you've talked about, you and I've compared notes. It's like I could take my finger, wet it and rub it really hard on 3000 grit and I yeah. can produce some shine. Yeah. So here you are now, even though that pad, show me your pad, that does have some residual yeah. um, polish it, on it. It does. Yeah. So, but I guarantee you could take a brand new pad and you could have held it up and polished that little section and you mm -hmm. could have created some shine. Oh yeah. And you, you sanded it at 2000 grit. Yeah. So what would be the argument of going to Okay, 3,000 grit, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000. Like, do, do you see any compelling argument other than absorbing and consuming more and more time as to why you would need to do that? It, it's, it's funny, you know, we're, we are talking about money on this video. We're talking about time. And whether somebody's charging $10 an hour or $100 an hour or $200 an hour, it, it's... That's a whole different amount, discussion, in yeah, my opinion. It, it's about the hours. Yeah, It's the about hours. the hours. This is, to me, absolutely justified 40 hours worth of work. We're only sanding with two grits of sandpaper, 1,500, 2,000. You can see the labor isn't necessarily in the buffing of this car. It's in all this prep work. Sam and I have 32 hours of sanding in this car right now. Yeah. 32 hours. And hopefully we'll be done today. Um, that, that's a lot of time. When I... You know, I see these detailers and they're trying to justify their money. You know, I watch them, their videos. Yeah. I have a 12 step buffing. Pro okay. Right. Why? Why do you? I, I think you can justify it easier. Well, we have a two step and I'm charging you 40 hours. <laughs> yeah. Because you're not doing any faster than this. If you want to go into more steps, it's going to take you more time. Right. But why do it? Because I'm, I'm already buffing fast. Yeah. So I can increase my. My butt, what, am I going to do it faster than that? I don't think so. No. <laughs> and, and what if no. I use 12 products to do that? Am I going to do it faster? No. no. <laughs> I'm not going to do it and faster. And that's where, that's where the salesmanship comes in yeah. and overselling and mm -hmm. hyping up your world to the customer where it's like, hey, I'm going to take your car. We're going to do a 12-step <laughs> uh, uh, compound yeah. polish. <laughs> and because, what? oh, yeah, paint and enhancement. and. Yeah. Uh, but see, the customers are ignorant, um, and, and there's not an industry in the world that doesn't have its share of hype. Yeah. Uh, cosmetics, fashion, uh, jewelry, I don't care. There's just not an industry that doesn't have its hype. And so when you try to build that value, that perceived value, there's a lot of strategy. So in our there world, is. it would be like, oh yeah, Mr. Customer, I'm gonna take this through uh, five different grades of sandpaper, <laughs> Then I'm going to take it through three different types of compounds and then five different polishes, three different types of pads, two different types of machines. And this is going to be this is going to be about a two week process <laughs> that I'm going to go through. And so, yeah, I'm going to have to charge you, uh, you know, five grand or whatever, yeah. you know. And so it's like, OK, but is that really necessary? Yeah. Can I not get from point A to point B and and come under the scrutiny of the most demanding and critical eyes much quicker than the hyped up world of what I illustrated there, which is like, oh yeah, 10 different types of sandpaper, four different compounds, four different polishes, two pads, two machines. So <laughs> as you say, it's like, okay, yeah, 40 hours. I can do some 40 hours. How much you're charging? Well, that's a whole different conversation yeah. between you and your customer. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there is ways, and this, what we're really talking about is efficiency. Mm -hmm. How do we become as efficient as possible? How do we get from point A to point B, uh, 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 achieve the desired results, 
and do it in the most quickest way, easiest way possible. And I think one of the, the biggest things that, you know, and you, you had chimed on that a little, was these customers, you know, when somebody's capable of spending two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars for a build, he's done something in his life to say that he's got <laughs> some, you know, he's got his stuff together. You know, yeah. he, he knows what's going on. So when you know I'm selling to these kind of customers, in the beginning maybe, you know, um, because I was inexperienced. Um, I was over fluffing, you know, my skill set or just to s try to justify a little bit more money because I wasn't making any money. Yeah. I didn't understand the business side of it that why don't I just be honest with the hours? Hey, that took me uh, three hours to take that bolt out. Yeah. Nobody's going to do it any faster than me. I had to get the torch. I had to do this. I had to do that. Right. I need to be paid for that. Yeah. And if he says, no, I'm not paying you for that. Well, then I know that's probably not a customer for me. Right. Go take it to somebody else. Let them beat their brains out trying to get this bold out. Right. So, you know, on the whole process, you just, you get more mature and you say, I'm sick and tired of working for free. I, I want to be honest with my customer. And then less fluff comes in there and you just sit down with them and say, hey, this is what it cost. This is the kind of material. Oh my gosh. That material costs that much? Yeah, you can go buy it yourself. Yeah. Go down to this store, or buy it. You mm. say, yeah, we can use a lesser material yeah. if you want. It's cheaper, mm -hmm. and uh, there's going to be consequences of buying cheaper. Because as right. a rule, you tend to get what you pay for. Absolutely. So yep. it's like, hey, I can use cheap if you want, <laughs> yep. and I'll charge you less. It's like, well, I don't want cheap. I and want the best. And the thing that once a customer starts to tell me how to do, I tell them, there's no guarantee now. That guarantee that I would give you for doing my job is gone. You know, yeah. it, it's it's totally 100% gone because now I'm doing it your way. Right. You know, we're cutting corners. It's on you. Yeah. It's not on me no more. <laughs> now they go, all right, yeah. all right. Because I don't want that car coming back in my shop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want it. I don't want to see that car again. I want to see the next project, you know, right. and I definitely don't want it to be a mistake that I could have. You know, I'm being honest with the customer. I'm going through the process. There's a novel of, concept. Yeah. <laughs> Honesty with the customer. Wow, what a, what a trip that is. But you, you look at this project, and I know that's what Ken really strives for here. And, and he's got so many customers that he's done this for. He, he really loves seeing um, these projects done, and he loves the family atmosphere with the husband, wife, um, kids even, who, who just dig these cars yeah you know yeah. they drive them out of here and it's rumbling and yeah you know so you know a lot he of wouldn't want that either it, he right. wouldn't want anything coming back on him so he he does the same thing so i think that um you know definitely what i would want people to learn in in these videos is you can get paid to do this 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 is a great trade this is a unbelievable trade and i believe that csi is unbeatable. You're not gonna, I don't care if it's 3M or who, whatever product line, you're not gonna beat it 100%. <laughs> yeah. You are not gonna beat us ever. You're not and, gonna and beat us. And by the way, if they do, <laughs> come on down here. <laughs> bring your, your compound, <laughs> bring your yeah, whatever right. buffer you want, whatever that's pad, right. please come yeah. down. That's right. We'll be happy to go toe that's to toe. Right. <laughs> and is it easy? No, it's not easy. I mean, you know, yeah, I'm you're 60 a mess. years yeah. old. <laughs> you know, this ain't easy. This is hard work, but it's fun. Yeah. It is fun and it's a great way to make a living. Yeah. So, so with that said is we just spent about 15 minutes on that. So I'm going to cut this and then we're going to get more into the, you know, the, what you might call the SOP. Okay. So, um, let's cut there guys, uh, and girls. I gotta, you know, gotta be gender neutral here. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Equal play time. So, uh, tune into the next episode cause, uh, Tom's going to teach you guys, uh, really some technique about polishing. Now that we just had that little tutorial about uh, business and profit margins and all that kind of stuff.